Let's get on with it. Roadhouse. Upcoming film coming March 21st on Prime Video. A remake from the director of The Born Identity, Doug Liman, starring Jake Gyllenhaal. There's a lot of news coming out of this movie, not just the trailer, but director Doug Liman says he is going to be boycotting the premiere of the film after Amazon refused to give the film a theatrical release. Doug Liman said, quote, Amazon asked me and the film community to trust them in their public statements about supporting cinemas. Then they turned around and are using Roadhouse to sell plumbing fixtures. End quote. Ricky Flex, are you going to be joining the boycott alongside director Doug Lyman for Roadhouse? No, I would not be. <laughs> it's Jake G. I have to see this. On Prime, like, it's easy to watch. I, yes, I do wish it was on the big screen, but there's no way in hell I'm not watching this movie. I don't yeah. care. Like, I don't care. Like, I, I do care, but, like, I'm not – I don't care enough to boycott. I, it's just, movies are in my DNA. And same with Doug Lyman. But, again, I don't feel personally, like, injured by this, hampered by this. The, do you think this movie warrants a theatrical release? Like, when I look at it, it's like, no shit, it's Jake Gyllenhaal. Like, Jake Gyllenhaal deserves to be on a big screen. And it's a remake. I think it could be profitable. Remakes do well at the box office typically, right? But it kind of tells me that Amazon has screened this movie and they don't have much faith in it. But it does look like a rollicking good time. And I use that word rollicking. I never say that, Ricky Flex. It looks like it's going to be violent. It's going to be funny. It's going to have Jake G kind of like volatile in a sense. We're going to see him like in the ambulance type of role, but we're also going to see him hone it in channel almost like that Ryan Gosling comedic type of energy that I think he could actually pull off in a very similar manner to, like, to the way Gosling does. It almost like reminded me of watching um, what's that uh, Fall Guy, Fall Guy trailer, you know, a little bit. I feel like him and Ryan Gosling are doing very similar things. Uh, but Ricky Flex, like this should be in theaters, no? Yeah, this would make a lot of money. Not because Jake G, I would say. It's just that he like brings it together. I think it's a part of it. It's just Roadhouse and this trailer, yeah. McGregor, like everything around it. And like the trailer itself, I wasn't the biggest fan because I have high expectations of Jake G, of course. But like at the end of the day, it's not a bad trailer. This will get a bunch of watches. And Doug Lyman, again, Tom Cruise has his faith in Doug Lyman. American Made, um, Edge of Tomorrow. Live, die, repeat sequel potentially. He, it will be Doug Lyman, and the SpaceX movie is going to be directed by Doug Lyman. So if Tom Cruise, again the king of movie theaters, is, has his faith in Doug Lyman, number one, you give him a theatrical release. You give him a theatrical release. And two, this movie can't like with Jake G wouldn't have signed on to do a chaos walking, which Doug Lyman did with Tom Holland. Uh, like this will not be a chaos walking. So at so end of the day. This is not just watchable. This will be decent at worst. And again, like you have to watch it for Jake G. You have to watch for McGregor. Just if you're interested in fighting and sports, if not, whatever, watch it for Jake G. Watch it because Doug Lyman's a reliable filmmaker that is respected by the biggest movie star on the planet. To me, it's like unfathomable. You could cast Conor McGregor in a movie and have him act like this, but it's for streaming. Like, come on. Come on. And like what I this movie, like obviously I'm interested in how Jake G, how he's going to unleash on screen. I like the idea of him, how he's this ha happy go lucky type of dude, but can snap at any second. That's like the Michael Bay ambulance energy that that's we why want I brought it at, up. that he does, you know, that he's good at. Um, But having McGregor here with like a shot of testosterone, like up his ass the entire time. I I'm like, this is like a. There's so many times where we see like professional athletes become actors and they become stoic on screen and they rely on action. It seems like they went up to Conor McGregor and they said, OK, we're going to give you two lines here, but you're going to say the shit out of these lines and you are going to be yourself. Act like you're promoting a fight. When I saw him face to face with Jake G with like that crazy look in his eye, I felt like I was watching a promo for a McGregor fight. Like they are letting Conor McGregor be Conor McGregor here. Like I love when they do that where they say, OK. This is what you're known for. Give the people what they want. That's what this movie's doing. I do think there was a lot, there was some chatter online, a lot of like pity, all, like, like some, some pity congratulatory thoughts, like almost like pity, um, 
I don't know how to describe it. Like they were saying, like, yes, this deserves to be on the big screen. This looks surprisingly good. Like, you, you know what? Let's be honest with ourselves. This is a 55% of Rotten Tomatoes staring us right yeah. in the fucking eye, right? This is this is this is not going to be right. The Godfather. This is going to be a Roadhouse remake that's going straight to streaming. That has Conor McGregor as like the dude. Big they're heavy leaning in the into movie. it. They're this, leaning into it, and it's they, fine. Right, right. But I like. I think some people are like wanting to give this movie flowers, and they want to like support it because it's not in theaters. Which I get it. That's like what good audiences do. Yeah, right? good fans. But I'm not overhyping this in terms of like. There's some parts of this where I'm like, it looks like Baywatch. Like, like, like it, it looks bad. It look, like, why are these boats exploding in the middle of the ocean? Seems like there's some line deliveries here. I, I have like, I, like, McGregor. like I, I have a bar roadhouse and like the way they're delivering it, that actress who owns the bar, I don't know who it is, but I'm like awful. I can already tell awful. So Madam web level line deliveries here, but why are we here? I'm here to see Jake Gyllenhaal fight Conor McGregor. Right. You can act like there's a little bit of corniness with the MMA aspect, right? It's like leaning too hard into like 2024 here. But I think they do get the point. They're leaning into it like you said. It's going to be a fun time. It should be in theaters just because this shit would make money. This shit would make money, you know? This is uh, it just kind of blows my mind. But what do you think about McGregor here? The line deliveries were bad, but you are right. They just I, be, I think they basically said like, hey – you just have to get to this level to make him fight you. You could just improvise some lines. And maybe yeah. they gave him a couple, like, example lines. I didn't like him, to be honest, like, as, as in the line deliveries. But I was entertained by it, and that's what this movie is, right? It's a roadhouse movie. We all knew what this movie was going to be when it was announced. And I, I, I crapped on Jake G saying, like, why are we still doing these type of movies? I'm hoping he's going to have a turnaround sooner or later. The Covenant is a nice, you know, nice little one-off there. He should be doing stuff like that to get back on track. Instead, he comes back and does Roadhouse. But whatever. I digress. Overall, McGregor, it's good for him. This is the type of movie he should be in to start out if he wants to do this type of stuff, which obviously he does. He's a showman for a reason. He's coming back to the UFC for a reason. And I think for the movie itself, like, again, they lean into it. They know. They look back at the Patrick Swayze Roadhouse. They knew what that was at the time. So it's just like it's that, but bigger. It's on boats. Like, like think about Roadhouse back to Swayze. Like the mansion scene, that huge fight out. Like that. What was that? Absurd. <laughs> Absurd. But like that's what I think we're getting in this movie. And you know what? The casting tells me everything. And like, in in the wrong hands, they make McGregor the lead of this movie. Even though, like they're they're doing like. They're letting Conor McGregor be Conor McGregor. You're having like a good looking movie star absolutely jacked up that's similar to Swayze with a Jake G. But then, like, what tells me like they're leaning into the Roadhouse remake, quote unquote, of it all? Billy Magnuson is like the big bad of the movie. Yeah. You know, I mean, you don't take him too seriously, but he's just like a big, like, I don't know, kind of like a doofus type of character, you know, someone that you know is going to screw up in the end. Like, that's who he is. That's who he is. This is going to be like just looking at the cast. I'm like, this is pretty spot on. I'm like, the only person missing from this trailer is like Michael Pena down, in, like, like as like the the side supporting character for Jake G, right? The bouncer that will never hit the big time. Like I, that's what that was going through my mind the entire time. Almost like an Ant Man type of like cameo in it. Yeah, they have the God, I forget his name, but uh, they also now have he looks guy, like Michael Pena. Yeah, his name's Arturo Castro. Uh, I forget what he's in. He's in something. Oh, God. He, oh, he's in freaking the menu. Oh, okay. He's one of the, yeah, like, yeah. Wall Street one bros. Of the, one of the Wall Street bros. Oh, yeah. Dude, I mean, speaking of, like, I meant to say, a surprise nominee at the Oscars, Flamin' Hot. Flamin' oh, Hot dude, gets nominated song. at the Oscar for Best Original Song. What a win for Eva Longoria. That's a huge one. Huge one. Sorry. Big, yeah. big name. But, um... Yeah, I don't think no. that was racist, but like, there's just another Hispanic character. Like, you know, I don't know. Just uh, to throw it out. <laughs> I, 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 I don't. I, I missed it. Went over my head. Um, as in, I, I don't even think I hear it. Heard it. But um, dude, like, i was just going through this cast too. Like, um, God, uh, the guy from Mayans, who was the son of Anarchy spinoff. The lead in that is the guy that Jake G is taunting in the beginning. That's a huge come down for him. Feel bad for him. Uh, we mentioned that guy from the menu. Um, and I'll also mention uh, Daniela M- Melchior, Rat Catcher 2. 
Yeah, it's, I, I, I Fast don't X, know. now this, like, what's he doing here? I can't get a read. I can't get a read. I Not actually, I, I think I can get a read. Actually, you know, I think she's going to be the really good-looking supporting actress in Fast and Furious slash like blockbuster movies. That's who she is. Yeah. Um, you know? so that was a shocking one, and then the final one, which I think arguably is more shocking, is Lucas Gage. Why the hell is he in this? He's again like, uh, in you, in Euphoria, in the first season of uh, White Lotus. Uh, how to blow up a pipeline uh, in that. Like, why is he like taking like a the step? mentee to Jill and Hall's mentor here? Yeah. Why is he taking a step back and do this? Maybe to work with Jake G. Maybe, honestly, that might be the reason. But that was kind probably of because he thought it was going to get a theatrical release. <laughs> yeah, that's so. That's a good point. Uh, they all probably did. Like, look at the stars in this. Jake Jill and Hall's in this movie. <laughs> Crazy. You know? It's like, why are why is Jake G starring in an action movie and it's not in theaters? You know, it's not I like I, when I see Roadhouse remake, I don't think of like extraction. You know, I don't think of like a, a made for streaming like uh, yeah. like uh, franchise. Like, I don't think about that. I think about like, oh, man, we're going to see Jake G losing it on screen, like on the big screen. That's to me. It's wild. Um Maybe they'll change their mind. Maybe Doug Lyman will have some type of swing. Maybe Tom Cruise will swing out of the rafters and be like, get this movie in theaters. The best movie since The Flash. Get this on the big screen. That, ah, oh God. That's so right. abomination. That does it for the Roadhouse trailer roundup. And that does it for episode 320 of the Drive-In Podcast. Make sure you are following wherever you listen. Make sure you rate us five stars and leave us a review. Make sure if you're watching on YouTube, you like, comment, and subscribe three to five videos per week. Uh, I should also mention, you guys, if you're listening, make sure you check out our our top billing draft of the best movies set in space. You want to check that out in honor of ISS that came out recently. We didn't review ISS. We wouldn't waste our time on that. But check out the draft. It's one of our better ones in recent history. Make sure you're following us on social media at the Drive-In Pod on Twitter and Instagram. Ricky Flex on the graphics. Keep up with all the latest news and trailers on Twitter or X. So, that's going to do it for 320. Until next time, we will smell ya.